This video will be talking about inflammasome. As the name suggests, inflammasome is somehow associated with inflammation. In a moment, we would know why. So, inflammasome is a huge protein complex and it's basically a multi-protein complex. It plays crucial role in innate immune responses. So, inflammasome is capable of activating caspase 1, which cleaves pro-format of interleukin family 1 molecules, such as interleukin 1, interleukin 18, into the active format. So, in order for the inflammatory cytokines or inflammatory interleukins to be activated, inflammasome uh, activation is required. That is why inflammasome is really important in context of all the inflammation. So basically it really processes the interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 18. Question is, inflammasome is found in which cell type? Obviously, the cell type that secretes these cytokines, right? And we know these cell types. These are neutrophils, these are monocytes, I mean macrophages, and then dendritic cells. Now, these, in order to understand the overall inflammasome, we have to understand nod-like receptors, which are actually component of these inflammasome. So there are different components or different subcategories of nod-like receptors. These are pattern recognition receptors, these are innate immune receptors, so it, it looks overwhelming at this point, but it's very simple. All of them have one thing in common, that is the leucine-rich repeat that is represented here in red. And each of these subcategory is basically uh, defined by one important signature. For example, NLRC family is defined by the card domain or caspase recruitment domain. Whereas NLRP family is basically, sig the signature of this uh, family is pyrin domain. Whereas NLRB has that baculovirus inhibitor repeat domain. Anyway, NLRP3 inflammasome is the most common inflammasome characterized. So let's look at the assembly of this inflammasome. So there are three major component, obviously NLRP3 and then caspase 1. So NLRP3 means it has a pyrin domain, which is shown here in orange. Caspase 1 is important. And then there is another adapter molecule known as ASC. Anyway, once this mega component is assembled, which often forms a pentamer or heptamer like structure, it is able to cleave specific uh, particular uh, pro form of the interleukins. But the question is, how does NLRP inflammasome is activated? What are the trigger signals? The trigger signals turns out to be internal or external trigger. So there are channels like panexin, which take out PAMs or DAMs, that means pathogen associated molecular patterns or damage associated molecular, molecular patterns. This lead to activation or of the NLRP inflammasome. Also, there are many in cellular signatures of damage, for example, extracellular uh, ATP, glucose, hyaluronan, all of these are potential trigger for NLRP3 inflammasome activation. Sometimes increased ROS level can also increase, uh, can activate inflammasome. When it is activated, the caspase activity spikes up and it can cleave pro format of interleukin 1 and 18 into the active form of interleukin 1 and 18 and each of these are secreted. Point to be noted that ROS increase can also in activate inflammasome and these uh, cytokines which are secreted can lead to inflammatory response in the nearby tissue. So just to have a quick summary of inflammasome, so there are three important components, the caspase one, the NLRP3 in this case, because NLRP3 is the most common inflammasome, and there are two types of trigger that can activate inflammasome. One is obviously pathogen-based triggers, like bacterial-derived, let's say, some sort of like pore-forming toxin, flagellin, DNA, RNA of the bacteria, etc. Or let's say viral RNA, viral particle protein, etc. Or fungal-derived proteins. There could be also sterile activators, which are non-biological. For example, uh, there could be com those can be coming from inside, like ATP, glucose, urate crystals, or hyaluronan. So, so some sort of like cellular subcomponents or cellular byproducts. But also there are environment-derived components which can be a trigger for inflammasome activation, like alum, like asbestos dust, like alloy particles 
floating in the uh, overall air. So that is why air pollution has a huge potential to evoke inflammation in the lungs and that's, is, that's important to understand. So the modest consequence is activation of these inflammatory cytokines which would lead to inflammation but the extremist uh, outcome is basically cell death associated with very high level of inflammation. But anyway, I hope this video gives a quick overview to inflammasome and I hope this is useful. So see you in next video. And please don't forget to support our channel. Thank you. See you in next video.